Okay guys, it's a beautiful day today and the perfect day for a home tour. So two years ago, we bought this 1970s double wide mobile home and we transformed it. We totally renovated the house inside and out and we're gonna take you guys through a walkthrough to show you what it looks like today. Now the front of the house has changed a lot. We put new siding on it, painted the foundation, new doors, new windows, new awning, even a new chimney. And it's looking awesome. But wait until you see the inside. Okay, so we step into our living room and you can see it's a pretty good size, but it has changed dramatically from when we had bought it. I'll kind of show you around. So you see, this is our living room. Believe it or not, this house came with so much furniture that it's been awesome. You can see we got our new, um, well, it came with a couch. And we got Belle's little school desk in front of the window so she can see out. If you turn around, this is where we're sleeping. And this might seem a little bit odd, but bear with me and it'll make sense by the end of this video. So in the old layout, when you came in the front door, it was the living room but it extended way beyond this wall. So it was double the size here. We put up a wall to create a third bedroom in that space and created this really cool entryway where we come in, a little mud area to take off our boots and coats. We built this bench, a built-in bench with a firewood holder, if you guys can see that. It works perfect for all of our needs. We love this space. And over here, we created a office nook, a kind of computer desk area where we can edit our videos, do our work, take care of our emails. Perfect. We love it being in the living room, but in its own space out of the way. And now here's the main living room area. You guys can see that we installed a new wood stove that's really handy to keep us warm in those cold winter days. So you guys can see we got a modern, kind of simple minimalist theme going on. And we use a lot of white, a lot of wood, natural colors. We really like that in this home. One of our favorite features is this plywood wall. It doesn't look like plywood, but that is plywood. Now throughout this whole renovation, we took everything down to the bare studs and we rebuilt it from the ground up. So everything is new. We wanted to make sure everything was perfect, done right and done the way we want. So everything you see is new walls, new drywall and everything else. We really went all out on this. Of course, we got new flooring, and the only thing that's original in this room is this couch, which was here when we moved in. The previous owners left it behind, and we're still using it today. And now for reference, I know cameras can make dimensions tricky to guess. This room is about 11 feet wide. All of our rooms are about 11 feet wide and in varying lengths. One of the features I like is this angled floor right here to define the entry area. I think that came out really nice and I like the white tile with the wood floor. Now we're going to be heading into the kitchen now, but before we get in there, I wanted to point out that this opening is square. When we moved into this house, it had an arched opening. Ashley did not like arched doorways, especially when it's the only one in the house and it feels so out of place. So we ripped the arch out, squared it up. It's about five feet open, five feet wide, and it's a lot nicer looking. So we walk into the kitchen. So now from the living room, we head into the kitchen. It's an eat-in kitchen. Came with a table and chairs, came with a toaster oven, came with appliances. So there's not too much to show in here. It's dated, it needs some work, but it's a kitchen. So the kitchen is one of the rooms that has transformed the most out of our whole house renovation. When we moved in, the kitchen was completely dysfunctional for us. It was a U-shaped kitchen right here with a sink on that far wall under a tiny window. We just hated the layout. We, we just were never comfortable cooking in there. We wanted to have a clean kind of galley style kitchen. So we just totally transformed the space and did that. Instead of having the dining table over here in the way of the walkway, we moved it into the kitchen and moved the kitchen along this back wall. You guys can pretty much see that it was a big, big, difference here. Some of the features that we love about our kitchen is the openness uh, and the workflow. I really like this big sink right here with the drain board built in. I'll show you guys that. 
but also the built-in cooktop. We wanted this kitchen to be easy to clean and maintain, so we tried avoiding the free-standing range because they always get a lot of crumbs and yuck underneath them. We didn't want that anymore. So we did the cooktop built into the counter. This counter is a birch butcher block and all solid wood that we installed ourselves. And it was just off the shelf at Home Depot, but it's a beautiful countertop and it's holding up amazingly. Here is our sink. It's actually four feet wide from end to end. The drain board is awesome. It really protects the wood and we can dry our dishes right here by the sink. One of my favorite features of the sink is actually this backsplash because you can see it just goes, the counter goes right into the windowsill and that just makes it feel so much more open. We like that a lot. You might also notice this. This is something we installed when we redid our plumbing and that is a pot filler faucet. And we have that just for our Berkey. So it just makes filling this easy. And this is not a coffee maker. This is a water filter just to have extra clean, safe drinking water. The cool thing about this is if we ever didn't want it, say we moved the Berkey or got rid of the Berkey, this can unscrew from the wall and it could be plugged and easily capped over and nobody would ever know it was there. So that's not a big deal. And it's a real big convenience for us. So we were happy we installed it. I also can't forget to mention that we made this table out of the same countertop to match. So we have a matching table and counter, and we like that. And now some people hate this feature, but this is actually a piece of the original paneling that was in this kitchen when we moved in. So we framed it and stuck it back on the wall. Okay, we stuck our refrigerator and our oven. You guys might've wondered where our oven is over here out of the kitchen way. It's close and convenient, but it is definitely out of the main kitchen area. We did that mostly because of space limitations and just what we were looking for in the house. It's just the way it worked out and it hasn't been a problem for us. The fridge is perfect where it is. The oven is a wall oven and even though it's out of the way and in this kind of back entry area, this is the back door to the outside, it's actually pretty convenient because when this, rub, when this oven is running, it's noisy, it has a fan that blows out, it's blowing heat everywhere. It's better to have it over here than where we're working. Also in this back entry is the door to the mechanical room, utility room, pantry. In here is the back door and a small half bath. So I'll show you that. So nothing fancy, just a small half bath in here. And this is also where the laundry room would be. So the washer and dryer are going to go here. And the water heater and the shelf, more stuff of ours. The shelf was here in the house. We just kind of shoved it in there and I'll show you how we access that. And let me take you in here. I installed a louvered door to make sure we could get some good airflow in here. And also bring heat in here in the winter or let heat escape. And you can see this is just kind of a rough room for storage. We got some shelving units in there. And right now it's mostly just leftover paint, batteries, things we want to keep stored away, not in the main house, but can't go in the barn because it'll freeze up. We also have our water heater, our water filter. And behind the door we have our electrical panel and our internet which goes to the various rooms of the house. We also have this duct on the ceiling that a lot of people ask about, and that's actually the dryer vent. So the dryer is behind this wall and the ducting comes up and blows outside. We decided to run it in the house because it was just the most convenient way to do it. And it's easy to clean and maintain if we have to take it apart. So there's not too much to that room. It's pretty basic, but it's very functional and we actually like it a lot. So. Happy we did this. And actually, when we bought this home, there was a small half bath in here and there was a toilet right here. And some people thought we shouldn't remove it, but we kind of had to, because one of the reasons is this was a much better use of the space than having a half bath. And also by code, you can't have the electrical panel next to a toilet. You can't be in the same room. It can't be a bathroom with an electrical panel. So we had to make a choice of removing the toilet or moving the panel 
and this was a lot better of an option was to just get rid of the toilet and turn this into something else. So as we leave the kitchen, so now we head down the hall. These are our buckets. We got stuff in there that we got to find a place for. And this door is how we access that shelf. So we're just making do with this as a closet. We're going to the hallway. Every mobile home has a hallway. This is ours. We did this built-in bookshelf for our books and puzzles, and that works really good to keep us organized. Over here, we built a laundry area into the hallway. It used to be kind of in this area, but it was on the opposite side facing the back door. So instead of being in the other room, we put them in the hallway. And the reason we did that is because if you notice, if we back up, the hallway is gonna start here. And now look at this long tunnel just going on forever. See, it's dark right now. Let me turn the lights on. That helps. Now, picture this being a solid wall. It would just make the hallway feel so long. So we decided to put these in the hallway because it breaks it up and it opens the space so you don't feel so crowded. And other than being a little noisy, it's not so bad. Did some cabinets up above for storage. And I guess we'll start with our son's bedroom. So here is our son's bedroom. Now this is just a cozy little boy's room. There's not too much to share in here, except for the fact that this used to be the living room. Remember when I told you we were in the living room, I said that it extended far down here. This used to be the end of the living room. We built this wall, put in a nice large closet, and we have a room for him. So we used a simple metal shelf with a garment rod as a closet organizer. He doesn't have any hanging clothes yet, but it works good. You might notice that we don't have any closet doors and that is by design. We really tried avoiding closet doors in this house because they're kind of a hassle. They're just in the way, they're extra money and they don't serve a good purpose unless you wanna hide the stuff in your closet. And a lot of people do, we just didn't want to. And if we feel like it, we can hang a curtain. So no closet doors. We have electric heat in all the house. So you'll see these heaters in every room. That's our electric heating. We don't use AC because it's just not warm here. So we don't need it. And all of the furniture in here, this little retro TV that he puts toys in is something that I made. The shelf I made and actually the bed frame I made. But basically all the furniture in his room is handmade DIY stuff we made for him and it works so good. I'm showing everybody your bedroom. Do you want to share anything? you want to show anything in your room or talk about it? What do you like about your room? Mm, I like uh, a cow. A cow? Mm-hmm. And a sheep. Mm-hmm. So as we leave Maverick's room, we go down the hallway and come to the bathroom next. So let's do the bathroom. Continuing down the hallway, we got the bathroom. This is the main bathroom. We got a double sink vanity, big mirror. You can see the toilet back here and the tub. So we kind of flipped to the bathroom. Originally, the tub was on this side of the room. The sink was on this side. We swapped them so that we can get a better use of the space. The tub and the toilet was here and the toilet just felt like it was in a crowded little cubby in a dark corner. We didn't like that. By putting a sink here, we opened up the space so the toilet doesn't feel as crowded. And then the tub could be on this wall with closet space behind the door. Let me show you. So behind the door, we have an open cubby where we have another metal shelf. We hang some towels on it and some supplies. And that's it, pretty basic. You can see our tub is a basic one piece tub Glass door, which we really love. We're so tired of shower curtains. And that's it, a pretty basic room. Our vanity is a floating vanity and that makes cleaning really nice. We don't have to worry about any water damage and we can get right under there. We also have this really cool built-in mirror. So it is a medicine cabinet and we can Put stuff in there. Lots of space in this bathroom. It's small, but there's a lot of room for organization. So as we leave the bathroom, we come down here. This is another closet. We did a little linen closet, which is basically just 
Um, you know, storage. No linens in there, but storage. Very handy. And I guess we'll do our master bedroom next. And continuing down the hallway, the furnace is in that closet, and then we have two bedrooms. And now we're gonna head into the master bedroom. And this room is probably the worst of all. It is super dated, super dirty. Let's open up these curtains. So there it is, we got some terrible, terrible paneling that has to come out. A really ugly, dirty rug that has to come out. But it's a big room, it's a nice big room. If you turn around, there's a built-in desk and a closet, and that's that. So the master bedroom is awesome. We really love this space, and that's weird because when we moved in, we didn't even want to walk into this room. It was the darkest, dingiest room of the house. It had super dark old paneling and a kind of gold green carpet, and it was just nasty, and it just didn't feel inviting at all. It had no light at all. So, we did our best with it. You can see we built another accent wall similar to the living room, but this one we painted, and I think that really is awesome. It really makes us happy to see that. We built some little floating stands to put on the wall next to our bed. We're trying to keep furniture off the floor the best we can. We like to be you know, easy to clean and not have stuff touching the floor. It's a good sized room, and over here, on the other end, we have another computer nook between our closets. We decided to do two closets, so his and hers. We're using curtains to cover them, and again, metal shelves to organize our clothes. These metal shelves are so handy. They don't hold dust. They're convenient to adjust to your own needs. We just love it. This is such a good idea. All you need to do is add a garment rod and you have an instant closet. So that's been working really good for us. Each closet is three feet wide. This is just under four feet wide in here. And this is just another desk where Ashley does her stuff. We made these walls plywood to contrast with the white. It looks really beautiful, it defines the space. We built a matching shelf that we don't really use, but it's there. And that was it, a pretty basic build. And now leaving our room across the hallway is our daughter's bedroom. So let's check that out. That's the last room of the house. So something you might notice is that the floor in our bedroom and the living room is this, but the kids' rooms have this. This was the original floor we bought for the house. And it's cool. It's hard to match with it. And they stopped carrying it. So we ended up switching to this floor later on and for the living room and we really like this better. Now we did tile all throughout the hallway, the bathroom, the laundry, the kitchen, and the entryway and it all matches. It was a ton of tile work but it holds up well at the very least. So here is our daughter's bedroom. Let's look at the little bedroom first. So just a basic bedroom with some wall paneling. We got a closet and that's it. You want to show your room? Anything you want to show off? Well, I've got my artwork wall here. Mm -hmm. I have my peacock over there. Here's my arbor. So our daughter's bedroom kind of L's. It goes around to this little cubby, which is a nice little sitting reading nook. And I built an arbor over it to hang some lights and just make it really fun for her. So this used to be the smallest room of the house. It was functional but small and this wall continued all the way down and the closet was right here. I decided to open up this wall and build a smaller closet this way and it makes the room feel more spacious instead of having the wall kind of boxing in the bed here. The room is 11 feet at this point but less than eight feet from this wall to that wall and that's how it used to be under eight feet wide we just wanted it to open up so this is what we came up with you can see the closet is three feet wide again using the same metal shelf which we really love and it works it's an open closet 
And this closet is especially out of the way, so you never really notice it. Even though we lost a couple feet of closet space this way, we gained a lot more square footage in the room itself, an extra space for sitting, and for a kid's room, I don't think you need a huge closet, so I think this works really well. On this side of the room, we have her desk where she does a lot of homeschool and drawing and art, and she has her collections and supplies up above in a little cubby uh, box that we bought online that works really good for her. And that's pretty much it. So as you can see, the house needs a lot of work, but it has a lot of potential. We're super excited to have it. At least we have a roof over our heads and heat and a place to cook and a place to sleep. So we are just super happy with everything. So I think that pretty much covers the house tour. We don't want to get too in depth. There's so many little things that we could show that we'd be here for an hour just going over every little yeah. thing. The house came out pretty good. There's only a few things that I don't like. Um, I think it's overall, we're happy with everything. Yeah. Overall. Now this was an intensive renovation for a mobile home. I wouldn't recommend doing the extent that we have, but we just got carried away and wanted everything to be the way we wanted it. All of the trim work in the house is something that we made ourselves from pine that saved us a lot of money. Uh, doing everything ourselves saved a ton of money. Yeah. A renovation like this would cost a lot of money. This yeah. did cost a lot, but it would have cost a lot, lot. So. Yeah, if you paid somebody else to do it, it probably wouldn't even be worth doing that. No, it would far surpass the, the value of the home. You might notice we don't have a lot of art in our house. We just don't hang a lot on our walls. It, we just don't. Yeah. It's just the way it is. We live a kind of semi-minimalist life, so we don't have a lot of stuff. We have more than some of the uh, minimalists on YouTube who live with nothing, but we, we do try to keep it slim and have the basics and not get too carried away. Now, outside the house, we did all new siding, new roof, new everything, windows, I mean... Steps, mm -hmm. painted the foundation. And it looks really nice out there too, but it's a basic white house. There's not too much to show. Looks better than an old rotten siding that was on there. Mm -hmm. And we have a big playlist of all the videos of us working on this house. So we'll link that below if you're interested in checking out all that. Watching the whole journey of doing the work on this home. And many of you guys already know it was pretty intense. A lot of work went into this. Yeah. <laughs> and we did it in a relatively short amount of time, probably a year and a half or so. Yeah, under two years for everything start to finish is amazing for us because we're not pros. We're just do-it-yourselfers, doing the best we can. It's just been a crazy couple of years. Yeah. So I guess that's all we have for now. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the tour. We'll be back soon with another video. So until next time, take care. Bye. Pop.